Hello, I'm Amy from amysews.com, home of the Power Serger subscription box, where we teach you everything you know about your serger and how to get the most from it. We're gonna talk about lettuce edges. And in our last box, people were asking about doing a lettuce edge on the edge of a sweatshirt. You can see I did it on the cuffs and the collars. It's very simple. You're gonna set up for a three thread rolled edge. And I just have my uh, Janome 2000 Air thread here. So I have thread in the upper looper, the lower looper, and my right needle. Now your serger may be a little different, but it is the right needle on mine. The stitch finger that sits back in here, you can see it kind of pop in there. I actually just pulled it, pulled it back. I have a little switch here that pulls it back and I dropped my blade. And I don't usually recommend sewing without your blade, but I did it. My blade is dropped and my stitch fingers pulled forward. Now, depending on your serger, you may have to rotate your stitch finger out of the way. You may have to totally remove it. So it's perfect time to grab your manual. And because this is not an automatic serger where it doesn't pre-select my tensions for me, my, and yours is gonna be a little slightly different. Mine is a tension of um, three for the left needle, two for the upper looper, and between six and seven for the lower looper to help roll that fabric over. So I have my threads all selected. Okay, so I already did one arm. So my upper looper thread is on the underside. My lower looper thread is on the outer side. So this is a very simple technique. You are going to set your um, stitch length for R, for row hem, or somewhere in that neighborhood, and your differential feed at two. So the differential feed helps stretch out um, the stitching. So this is pretty much everything that goes against what we've said when you learn to sew was not to do. We are going to stretch as we are stitching. Now I want you to be very careful because we rotated the blade away. You may have a marking on your throw plate that shows where your cutting blade lines up and mine does. I'm going to pay attention to that so that um, I don't let my fabric roll inside here because you will snap a looper off. So please be very careful. I do not have a free arm. So I'm gonna start, this is my seam. I'm gonna start just a little bit past my seam. And let's slide this in here. I'm gonna raise my needle up and I can see right where it is going to stitch. Now the hard part as I'm doing this is I'm going to be stretching out the back and I'm gonna be stretching in the front while I am surging and being very mindful of where my blade should be. And if you have a free arm, of course, this is a little bit easier to do. And you can see what's happening. It's starting to wave. And again, this is not something you'd ever want to do unless it was for this specific um, technique. It does take a little bit of pressure to do it. Now, this really only works on this rib knit. Okay, so if you have a, an inexpensive t-shirt laying around, it really doesn't necessarily um, work for that. So now when I get through here, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my thread, original thread chain and I'm going to cut it off. And then I'm gonna sew one or two stitches on top of where I started. Pick up my needle and I'm just gonna slide it off the stitch fingers and then I'm gonna chain off. This way it's easy. Now I can just separate these threads and tie a very simple knot. And this is what you get. So when you put your hand in here, 
How pretty is that? So this has a little bit of contrast to it. This is tone on tone, which I highly recommend because you can see here um, through the stretching, if it like, um, it doesn't skip a stitch, but the way the rib knit pulls, it may not lay is nice. When it is tone on tone, like it is on the other side, you really don't see any, any flaws whatsoever. <coughs> So just remember, it's a three thread rolled edge. You're gonna pull back that stitch finger. You're gonna set up like you do for roll hem. And I remove my blade, be very careful because you don't wanna cut the fold, of course, on the rib knit. Um, my differential feed was all the way to the positive, which is mine goes up to 2.0. Yours may go a little higher than that. And I just have a regular needle in. Now, another little tip I wanna give you, for some reason you're making a sweatshirt or you're making a fleece jacket and you cannot find rib knit to match, which is almost impossible. I go and get myself a pair of socks. I cut off the top of the socks and this becomes my cuff. There's beautiful 100% cotton socks, wool socks, that works beautifully. And you can do that lettuce edge on the top for like little girl socks and things like that. So there's a couple different applications you can do while doing a lettuce edge on your serger. So set up for Rohem. Uh, it's sweatshirt season here in Western Pennsylvania. So go ahead and um, give it a little practice. Or maybe you have an old one that's kind of yucky, a paint sweatshirt, and give it a try. So just a three thread rolled hem to make a beautiful lettuce edge because the more you know, the more you sew.